morning and welcome to and from St. Columbus Presbyterian Church. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. As we open our service today, I encourage you to pause for a moment and to think on the great gift of music to this world. The great plethora, variety of sounds that contribute towards a common tune. The words that draw us as a community of faith to consider the very essence of life as we sing of God and his creation. And not only to think on these things, but to think more generally on the giftedness of the life that you and I enjoy, the things that we are able to do, the things that we are able to share and experience. And as we do these things, I believe the words of the psalmist, the beginning of Psalm 98, become more alive and real to us. Sing to the Lord a new song, the psalmist writes, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. And so let us do just that as we join together in song, sing for God's glory that colours the dawn of creation. Sing for God's glory that colours the dawn of creation, racing across the sky, trailing bright clouds of elation. Sun of delight succeeds the velvet of night, warming the earth's exultation. Sing for God's power that shatters the chains that would bind us, searing the darkness of fear and despair that could blind us, touching our shame with love that will not lay blame, reaching out gently to find us. Sing for God's justice, disturbing each easy illusion, tearing down tyrants and putting our pride to confusion. Life blood of right, resisting evil in slight, offering freedom's transfusion. Sing for God's saints who have traveled faith's journey before us, who in our weariness give us their hope to restore us. In them we see the new creation to be, spirit of love made flesh for us. Let us pray together. You raise your hand and gently begin the concerto of creation. Birds carry the melody, stars mark the rhythm. Mountains dance in merriment, and little children clap their hands with joy. Love's composer, our new songs are lifted to you. The old, old song is reborn in our hearts. Christ is risen. You invite us to sing in a world deafened by despair and haunted by the tunes of fear. O oh God, you who are always doing a new thing, we confess that we sometimes close windows against the fresh air of new ideas, against the noise of other people's worries, against the winds of change. God of every place and time, we confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different, against world news or community concerns. Forgive us our insulation in our locked homes, our shuttered churches, 
the security systems guarding our hearts. Open our lives once again, we pray, and let your spirit blow through. In the name of the one who was, is, and always will be, Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to John chapter 15 and verses 9 through to 13. Let us listen together for the word of God. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. May God himself add to this the reading of the scriptures, his blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Words of Jesus to his disciples, to the community that surrounded him, words that foreshadowed what lay ahead in the cross as he spoke of no greater love than that of a friend laying down his life for others. Words then that were heard by the community of John in the first century, the church facing significant persecution, undoubtedly drawing some kind of strength and consolation from this shared experience as they reflected back upon their master, their Lord, and upon the cross. Words that we hear today that are centered around love, around abiding and around choice. As Yap and I reflected on this text, one of the the things that emerged as central was the church as a people chosen for love. You did not choose me, but I chose you. The words of Jesus to the disciples. Yap, can speak to us a little bit about the, the notion, the idea of being a people who are chosen when we reflect so much in society on the choices that we need to make mm. and take a step back now and consider ourselves as a people who are chosen uh, by God it's a it's a profound question uh, and and I suppose we can we can reflect on this for for hours but we don't we don't have hours uh, for me I think the, the the critical idea behind understanding what it means to be a chosen people is to recognize that God's choice of us in the person of Jesus is shaped by love. It's a choice of love. It's a choice made in love. It's a choice made for love. And and we are chosen to love. And that's something that we spoke about as we reflected on this text. And I, I think it's very easy, as has been the case in the past, and is still the case in some faith communities, to get distracted by the, almost the mechanics of choice, that, that when Jesus says, you did not choose me, I chose you, to get distracted by who's chosen and who's not chosen, mm. to, to get distracted by how the choice is made or why the choice is made, and, and to not hear these words for what they are. Mm. When Jesus says to his disciples, you did not choose me, I chose you, I chose you in love. Mm. I chose you for love. And I, I chose you to love, to love in my name in a, in a broken world. And, and there's something of that captured in, in what John might have wanted to communicate to, to his early audience, his first audience, that, that in the midst of this persecution, not despite it, mm. not regardless of it, but in the midst of this persecution, we were chosen to love, mm. to love in a way that is tangible and to love in a way that is real. And so uh, perhaps the invitation as we reflect on this idea of what it means to be chosen um, is to move away from slogans like the frozen chosen and Mm -hmm. things like that and Mm -hmm. and to recognize that that God's choice of us, of all of us in the person of Jesus, 
is a choice that is rooted in love so that we might become something of, of the embodiment of God's love mm. to, a, to a hurting and, and broken world. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And, and each of us, I think, in different contexts have known what it's been like to, to be chosen mm. by someone and to be chosen by a sporting captain or to be chosen out of a list of people who have been interviewed for a position. Mm. And do you remember those schoolyard picks? I do. I'm interrupting you now. But during break time, when yeah. you want to play rugby or you were English, so you played soccer. But <laughs> we did. <actually. laughs> we did. And you get two team captains and they get yeah. to choose. And it was always the most, it was the most horrible thing yeah. to be left last. Yeah, yeah. Sure. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's, there's a sense here of perhaps stepping back and saying um, and reflecting on the fact that we make so many decisions that lead us in so many different directions. But behind all of this is the divine whose choice is sustained mm. um, whose decision for us is not one that that changes um, but one that embraces us through our whole lives we are a people in the midst of whatever circumstances we find ourselves uh, are, are we a people for privilege are we a people for power are we a people who have been set aside for social upliftment what what is at the 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 core of our identity as a people mm. and here jesus speaks plainly to the disciples you are a people a people not an individual you mm. are a community who have been set aside mm. uh, for love mm. it just so happens that as we we reflect on these things we find ourselves here in a context that we we celebrate mother's day um, today and we, we have opportunity to, to contemplate the best of motherhood. Our experiences have, have undoubtedly been varied. Um, Yako, how does motherhood mm. uh, speak to the type of love that Jesus refers to here, particularly when he says um, the laying down of one's life, the this, this self-sacrificial uh, love? Mm. Um, and maybe you, you choose to give us an example from your personal yeah. experience. Yeah, I, look, I think there's something of a, we might call it a divine irony, that on a day like Mother's Day, we find ourselves reflecting on a text that has at its very center the, mm. the idea of love, and a particular kind of love. When, when we're chosen to love, Jesus says to his disciples, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another mm. as I have loved you. Mm. Which, which is a very particular kind of love. It's, mm. a, it's a selfless, giving love. No greater love has anyone in this that he would lay down his life for his friends. And for me, obviously I can reflect on my own relationship with my mother and, and some of the things that I experienced and saw there, but one of the things that I've learned about motherhood from watching Jackie mother mm. is precisely that. This, this selfless, giving love mm. that that is, is almost incapable of, of seeing boundaries, of mm. seeing a, a limit to, to what, is, what might be sacrificed mm. for children. I, I think as a child, you learn to, to almost expect that mm. from your mother because that's, what, that's the environment that, in healthy situations. Mm. And I think it's important that we recognize mm. that, there are, that there are many situations that aren't healthy. Um, but, but when motherhood is as it should be, as it, as it could be, then we, we grow up in this environment where we almost expect and anticipate that our mothers will give anything and, mm. and do all things. But now being husband and father and being able to watch Jackie mother in this way, I, I, it becomes more real, it becomes more concrete to watch the way in which she over and over and over again gives of herself. Mm. Um, in, in many, many different ways, from small ways of getting up out of bed when she's actually still exhausted and going, bed, going to bed much later. Those are small ways. But, but just the number of times that I've had the privilege of witnessing in Jackie a mother who, who is willing to give everything um, for the love of her children, um, to me, that's something quite remarkable. And that's, that's a, an echo of... I believe what Jesus is expecting um, and calling his disciples to in this passage. As we individually and as a community contemplate the 
the gift of motherhood mm -hmm. um, to us and in wider society, the ways in which mothers have sacrificed deeply for the well-being of us, their children, um, for their families. Let us see in this something of the heart of what Jesus calls the church as a community to be, uh, the best of these things, to sometimes a hurting, a, a depressed, a confused, a lost, a wandering uh, world, that, that we may, as a congregation, um, looking back at the last hundred years, more particularly now looking forward at the next hundred years, be a people that are continually growing with the very heart or the very essence of our being, being love for one another. May God bless you wherever you are found this day and as you think <clears throat> on these things. Amen. This last week has been marked by a number of high moments worthy of mention and certainly of celebration. On Friday, our centenary golf day was held at Parkview Golf Club on a beautiful winter's day. It was a field of golfers that was beyond our expectations in terms of numbers, some lovely prizes, and perhaps above all, a tremendous sense of camaraderie. Thank you so much to all who were involved in putting together what is truly a spectacular day. In a way that shocked, surprised, elated us, one of our members just over a week or so ago uh, contacted us and has pledged a million rand toward our building project, which has given us such a boost and has made this goal seem that much more tangible. Please, where you are able, in ways big or small, uh, do consider contributing to this exciting new chapter in our church's life. On a personal note, I'd like to extend sincere thanks for all the birthday messages, um, for the phone calls, for the love that we have received over this last week. And finally, to say, as has become the norm, we would typically have a video from an international friend, a lecturer or a student as part of the service. That has not been the case uh, today, not by virtue of oversight, oversight, but by virtue of the fact that Professor Bert Kerrigan has put together such a comprehensive, such a meaningful message of affection for us as a congregation that it simply is too long to stitch into the service. So please do look out for it in next week's newsletter and on our social media as the week goes on. We pray together and as we do so, we remember our mothers 
and those who have filled a maternal role in our lives. We remember those known to us who are struggling at this time, and we remember the church throughout the world, reflecting on the experience of and the need for the commands of Christ to be embodied. We thank you, gracious God, for the love that frees us to ask questions and explore, to frame doubts and investigate new possibilities, for the love that enables us to marvel at our own existence, to ponder and remember, recognize our needs and affirm our knowledge and purpose for the love that helps us to communicate with one another, to express trust and respect, share heartaches and visions, to convey care and compassion, for the love that liberates us to celebrate the world around us in poetry and song, to delight in shapes and colors, intricacies and patterns, powerful forces, and deep mysteries, for the love that encourages us to express something of our faith, for creeds and prayers, hymns and readings, discussion groups and sermons. Above all else, we thank you for the love that allows us to admit that we have limited words to adequately describe the presence of faith in Christ the wide embrace of God the Father and the holy wonder of the fellowship of the Spirit. We thank you for that point where our love becomes wordless adoration. Through Christ Jesus, who taught us to praise, we now do so together in song. As we conclude our service and move into the rest of the day, go into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord your God. And know that the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with you this day and always. Amen.